Hey folks, it's Michael Johnson. Welcome to this week's Energy Sketch. We're going to talk about diamond mining, diamond creating, and remote industrial energy. In the news, uh, lately, uh, maybe a month ago, Rio Tinto to build largest solar power plant in Canada's north. So what I'm showing here is the Diavik diamond mine, a combination of open pit and underground mining over here in uh, the Northwest Territories in a remote area. The only access to the site is over this lake on a winter ice road. So it's very quite complicated logistics. And it's an interesting site. It's one of the first to have installed uh, wind turbines in a remote uh, northern mining facility. And that is over here. You can see there are three wind turbines, and this is a bit of a hint as to how to look for wind turbines on Google Earth. Look for the shadow, right? This is the wind turbine from above, and you're going to see the shadow of the, uh, the shaft there, the pile, and uh, the three blades. So they have three wind turbines that provide a small amount of power. I don't know the details, but it is small compared to the 80 million liters of diesel fuel that they consume roughly every year. They have about 80 million liters of storage capacity. And those tanks are like 40 meters in diameter. And you can see my previous video on the challenges of decarbonizing islands, which applies here. In a sense, this mine is basically an island that gets fuel delivered once a year and if we wanted to replace that fuel by a decarbonized green fuel alternative like hydrogen or ammonia or methanol or other things the challenges are great in terms of the scale of the storage that's needed so it's interesting uh, that they'll be installing solar panels uh, at the end of the life of the mine so it won't be providing that much power but it will power the sort of closure operations and maintain some pumping and some treatment and and stuff like this as the mine comes to a close and this all got me thinking about diamonds and what they're good for what they're used for i mean of course we have you know consumer grade diamonds that are beautiful rings that people wear and also diamonds are used for, in industry for cutting operations um, but why do we mine diamonds? And this got me thinking of the scale of this infrastructure here, really, this open pit mining in a remote, pristine sort of Arctic tundra. Is it really necessary? Um, wouldn't it be nice if instead we could simply fabricate, manufacture those diamonds from clean energy? And this is happening already. Um, there are known processes, industrial processes out there, maybe not at full large industrial scale, but we do do this today. We manufacture diamonds using two processes. Here on the left is a diamond manufactured from CVD, chemical vapor deposition, which I'll get into a little bit later. The other diamond down here is made from HPHT, high pressure, high temperature, which is basically just squeezing uh, molecules of carbon in order to form into that diamond structure. And here on the white right is a natural diamond that's been mined from the earth where the earth's crust has naturally produced the conditions of high pressure and high temperature and long time to take carbon from ancient life forms and basically turn it into diamonds. And I like to think that that process of creating that diamond is kind of along a spectrum of carbon conversion that nature does for us. So think about carbon from ancient life forms, ancient biomass, dinosaurs, fish, trees, all this stuff, wherever it is located in the world gets dies and forms sort of layers and then gets compressed and compressed and compressed over time. And this is how we produce fossil fuels, like starting with natural gas, uh, in a ga gaseous state, if you apply more pressure, temperature, and time to that, you'll get a liquid form of uh, fossil fuel. Again, more temperature, pressure, and time will produce solid fuels like coal, and eventually will then produce the sort of highest, most compacted form, which would be graphite or diamonds. And we can do this instead of relying on nature to provide us with the pressure, the time, and the temperature, we can do this more rapidly by injecting energy and ideally clean energy. We can manufacture 
these products. We can manufacture these fuels. And this is along a spectrum of e-fuels that we're talking about these days. So let's talk about um, that a little bit here. So there's one company that claims to be making diamonds from thin air, ether diamonds, the world's most sustainable diamonds made from 100% captured carbon. And I'm not a spokesperson. I have no affiliation with this company. I just like the, the this name, Ether, just, you know, harvesting carbon out of the atmosphere to create diamonds. So how does this work exactly? So their diamonds are made from this CVD process, chemical vapor deposition. So you have this essentially this reactor, chemical vapor deposition reactor with a substrate here on the bottom where you start with a few you know atoms a few molecules a few sort of elements that are going to be able to start that reaction and then the the, the diamond is going to grow on top of this substrate so you need to inject some gas in this case uh, methane and a bit of hydrogen i think also and you apply some charge uh, via some plasma or some electrodes in order to force the carbon atoms from the methane gas to start growing on top of the substrate. So atom by atom, layer by layer, with the right pressure and temperature conditions in this reactor, you can start to grow a diamond in a crystal structure. So where does that methane come from? Because we could do this with fossil methane, but that wouldn't really make it ether, 100% captured carbon. So that methane comes from a methanation reaction taking hydrogen and CO2, combining them together in a reactor upstream of this process to produce this methane. And we could call this E-methane, renewable methane, fabricated methane. It's not fossil methane because the CO2 that we're using in this process has been sucked out of the air using a process called direct air capture. So using some energy and some sorbents, basically you suck in a large quantity of air, because remember carbon dioxide today is around 400 parts per million. So essentially this is kind of like a sieve. You suck in large quantities of air and using some sieve, some absorbent material, it absorbs the carbon dioxide and then we release it into a pure stream of CO2 that feeds this reactor. And the other element there is the hydrogen. And so the hydrogen is green hydrogen produced from uh, electrolysis of water. Splitting the water with an electric current produces hydrogen and oxygen, which we normally just vent or use for other purposes. So that's a green hydrogen with direct air captured CO2 in a methanation, methanation reactor produces methane, CH4. We feed that into our chemical vapor deposition, apply the right uh, electric circuit through there at the right pressure and temperature conditions, and we start to grow these diamonds. And the whole thing is powerful powered by solar and wind. So that's how we make diamonds from thin air. And it's related, all these processes, the direct air capture and the green hydrogen and the methanation are also relevant processes that we're looking at for the energy transition to produce fuels that we can transport around the world, um, like CH4. I mean, we, we could produce CH4 in a green way from direct air captured CO2 and uh, water electrolysis hydrogen and then burn it in power plants in the remote locations in the other countries that we would ship it to. And this is along the themes that we'll get into later and the scale of this and the different energy uh, vectors that we might use to transport energy intercontinentally. But today, for today, it's just a little sketch around how we could make uh, green diamonds and possibly do less mining around the world. Instead of mining and leaving that legacy of sort of damaged landscapes, we could be creating diamonds from green energy and instead leaving a legacy of a massive green energy producing infrastructure. So thanks so much for tuning in to this week's Energy F Sketch, folks. Uh, Subscribe, like, comment, love to hear from you. Tune in Monday, 12, 12 p.m., youtube.com slash at Energy Sketch. Thank you so much, folks. Toodaloo!